there are two types of power of attorneys. There is an ordinary power of attorney and there is a durable power of attorney. With an ordinary power of attorney, it ends when somebody passes away. It ends when somebody becomes incompetent. For example, they have Alzheimer's. It is though the document is ripped up and it cannot be used anymore. A durable power of attorney also ends when somebody passes away, but a durable power of attorney stays in effect when somebody becomes incompetent. That's the durable aspect to a durable power of attorney. Now, as far as a durable power of attorney is concerned, there's two types. One is for health care. One is for financial affairs. When Christy and I do wills for people, we typically do four documents. We do the will itself. We do a living will declaration. We do a health care power of attorney, and we do a financial power of attorney. So, Rose, having power of attorneys is very important, and we do both a health care and financial. We feel they're very important documents for everybody to have. Absolutely. And, Tom, especially because people think about a will, and they're, of course, very concerned as to who's going to be in charge if they pass away. And I think that people are just really that aha moment when we say to them, yes, very important, but it's equally as important to think about who would be there to help you and be in charge if you are alive but incapacitated, and that's exactly what these power of attorneys do. Well, that's a great point. Now, Rose, the other thing I want to say about a financial power of attorney is is that there is last-minute planning that can be done to preserve and protect some of your wealth from nursing homes and Medicaid, okay? So if you are concerned about spending all your money on nursing homes and Medicaid or you have elderly parents are, well, there is last-minute planning that can be done to protect some of their wealth. To do this last-minute planning, it absolutely requires that you have a good financial, durable power of attorney. When I say good, what do I mean? Well, let me tell you what I don't mean. I don't mean one that comes off the office supply store form, okay? You need to have a good financial durable power of attorney. I do recommend that an attorney do it for you. Of course, we'd be happy to. Absolutely. It must meet Florida law requirements, of course. And the other thing to add, Tom, to that is, as you know, oftentimes husband and wife also, again, don't realize. So again, husband and wife, even with the Medicaid planning, must have a power of attorney yeah. for each other. You know, most husband and wives, they own everything jointly and that if the means of the husband becomes incompetent, the wife has got control of those joint assets. Mm-hmm. But even married couples have assets in their individual names like IRAs, retirement accounts, 401ks, Social Security. So even married couples need to have these financial durable power of attorneys between themselves. Absolutely, because if a spouse is alive but incompetent, the uh, the spouse cannot speak to that about the 401 401k or any retirement account that is in their spouse's individual name, they cannot talk to them without the power of attorney. Yeah. And by the way, when we do power of attorneys for you, we also typically we do a first, second, and third choice. So that if you're a married couple, you are each other's first choice. Mm-hmm. Second choice is typically a child. Third choice is typically a child. Yes, you can have more than one child appointed under powers of attorney. Rose, again, we'd be happy to help you. And you'll call over our office next week at 407 423 5561. 